Today what I'm going to do is um, show you how I start to identify the different planes in the piece that uh, I'm working on. This is a bas-relief uh, medallion and uh, yeah, the lighting's better if I tilt it down this way. Um, you can kind of see that I'm working towards a Clydesdale jumping through a wreath. Uh, this is the design. And this is um, the design that I traced onto the clay yesterday. And what I want to work on today is pushing various parts of the relief um, back and bringing some parts farther forward. As you can see, we've got a pretty good start going. Um, I'm just going to keep working on developing a little more detail and um, bringing out various parts and pushing back various parts. I've got a pretty good start going and I'm just going to keep working on it. So you're welcome to watch and um, feel free to post any questions. Uh, this is Chavant clay, uh, medium hardness. Um, I had originally heated the clay and then flattened it into a pancake. I rolled it out and then traced my design onto it. So it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, I don't want it much thicker than that because it'll be too heavy for casting. So, well, it'll be too heavy for just too much resin. You know what I'm saying? Like when you cast it, it's just so thick and it's a waste of resin. So we want to make it thin enough so that it's not real heavy and thick enough so that we have enough room to create detail. Okay, so I'm just gonna work on this and you guys are welcome to watch and if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. Um, I'm not an expert at this, but I'll do my best at answering your questions. Um, does this angle work better? I'm trying to figure out for maybe lot of tools, different tools that I like to use. I like these little scoops and I like these little pointy spoons and they've got this nifty area on the other end. It's a two-handled tool or one-handled tool with two points. So that's, I love that. I love this little tiny hook with a curved spot on the end. That's one of my favorites. And I've got a real assortment here. I mean, there's just a little of everything. There's knitting needles and rubber things and round things and pointy things. And <laughs> just whatever happens to work. I really like this, this too, this kind of a scoop thing. And this clay is not super hard. Um, if you want it to be super hard, you can put it in the freezer and that'll really help to preserve some detail and make it a little more like carving instead of scooping and squishing like I like to do. Um, and if it's too hard, then you can always heat it up. Um, I wouldn't put this whole thing in the microwave, but the little glob I have going over here, you can always put that in to make it a little more workable. So, okay, enough yakking. I'm going to get comfortable here and just going to start working away on this and referring back to my, isn't that cute? How fun, huh? Little draft horse jumping through a wreath. I don't know how much of all this detail I'll end up putting in, um, but I'm going to try and if it's too busy or whatever, I can always take stuff out. So, you know, it'll develop as it goes. Um, and I don't really have a set plan. I kind of have an idea as I work. Maybe as if I've done this more, I'll, I'll um, have a better idea what I'm doing. <laughs> And this is only about the, let me see, probably about the 10th medallion I've sculpted. So we'll just kind of start picking away here. And I think I'm going to kind of work on the tummy here and maybe smooth this out a little bit. This leg kind of looks like it needs brought forward more, so 
like this this knee would be farther out towards us than the head so you can see there's three planes here the knee would be like probably the part that's going to be farthest sticking out this way the head's on a plane in between the two legs and then the wreath will be behind that so you can see how i've got that kind of sketched out here for where we're at I wanted to save this yesterday, but I got so excited working on it last night. I kind of went too far and I should have videoed all that, but we can keep working on it today. And you'll see, I kind of just jump around. I'll start in on an area and be like, well, this looks like fun over here. So I want to round this tummy out a little bit more. You see how I've got kind of a hole there, so. I'm going to squish some clay down into that. And this is just like a drawing, you know, you have a sketch phase going. So, you know, don't worry that you've got too much clay or not enough clay. You can always add some, you can always take some out. And the detailing and smoothing phase comes after you get your basics laid in. You have to have your basic shape first. I want to bring this knee a little farther forward. And then work it so that it goes backwards farther into the drawing. Or, yeah, drawing, see? I think two-dimensional. I'm pretty new to sculpting. I just started sculpting about 10 years ago. Um, when I started doing these medallions. Mostly I'm a flat painter and uh, I was trained traditionally in working with oils when I went to college and I just never could quite figure out the three-dimensional thing. I was always a flat work artist, but boy horses, you know. I was raised around horses and they're so tactile, everything with horses. Horses respond to touch and just being around them, you know, you just want to run your hands over them and that's something that, you know, I'd like to transfer into my work here. Let's well, see right here is where the shoulders are starting to come forward out of this wreath. So there's like a little bit of a transition here that I want to accent and kind of push the wreath back. So I give myself a little edge to work with there. And take my little scoopy thing and just lift out a little bit more of that. And it's, you know, I have my drawing on here that's just a reference. It's, you know, no big deal if I scoop a part of it out and it's gone. Um, you know, yesterday when I was working on this, I was taking my X-Acto knife and like literally just cutting layers off, which really work great. You know, you can just kind of shave a layer right off and that just brings it farther back behind the layer above it. I've seen some other people work and they'll actually like make these layers on another tile. They'll you know, roll them out and cut the individual pieces out, almost like a little cookie cutter. And eh, that's cool too, you know, it all works. I mean, however it works for you is how it works. That's what's so great about clay, is you can add some, you can take some away. It, uh, it just, so non-resistant, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. It's just so willing to do whatever you want. Now see, when you're doing medallions, you gotta make sure you don't have too many undercuts. And undercuts is where, say like if I push this clay back and it goes back underneath, you can see that there, how it goes back underneath that piece of the leg right there, that's something you wanna avoid because when you're, um, casting this piece later, uh, 
the mold itself is a stretchy sort of a silicone and it'll go down in there to create that void and then once you pour the resin in as you're lifting the resin out um, it's going to keep pulling at that undercut and eventually it'll tear and you start to lose detail um, as the mold tears it'll cause damage to the areas around it so we want to keep that in mind as you're sculpting to avoid undercuts as much as possible and it'll just make your life a lot easier and your mold will last a lot longer so we'll just fill that back in and smooth that out and we won't have any undercuts. Okay, I'm going to stop talking here for a few minutes and just work. And uh, feel free to watch. Hope you don't get too bored. I'll just work on this little tummy and rib area. Um, I just got a little too overzealous yesterday and scooped out a little bit too much of that area. So I want to build that back before I forget. You know, sometimes you just got to do it while you're thinking about it. There's been, you know, pieces I've worked on and later on I think, my gosh, well, how did I miss that? I should have done that way back when in earlier layers and not had all this detail I got to worry about now. Now you see how the face is completely flat here, um, but it's actually sort of on an angle, so I'm going to have to sculpt away cut away some part of this face or build this part up maybe i haven't quite decided what i'm gonna do yet um to give it that three-dimensional look i don't know maybe both you know you can take away a little bit of this side but i kind of like where this ear is right now and i kind of like where this one is so maybe i'll just build up this side of the face and we can take just a little bit of this muzzle down and start building up the three-dimensional look. He's going to have a halter on, um, but I'm just going to carve this flat for now and we'll add the halter later. We've got to get the facial details in first. So we'll just kind of take this side down a little bit more and see I've got a pretty bad undercut underneath that nose. So I'm just going to stuff some of this clay under there. You want your transitions from your background to your foreground to be smooth. And what I mean by that, again, is, you know, try to avoid any undercuts if you can. Because it'll just make your life or your caster's life that much easier. I don't want to lose the gist of my drawing. So I am going to put that line back there so I kind of remember where the face is. So this area above the eye, you know, you have that forehead and the bones above the eye, that structure, that's probably going to be what sticks out the most on this piece. So we'll start there and go down. So I kind of like to, you know, roll the clay out kind of into a shape that will help make more sense as I go. Well, 
this guy be fun? I mean, this little drafty guy, he could be a gypsy horse, which come in a bazillion colors, or Clydesdale, Shire, any of those <clears throat> heavy leggy type horses with lots of feather. build up that facial bone along the nose ridge so that's going to come down this way and that's going to give us a little more structure and angle to the face and by all means if you have real horse reference photos to work from keep them nearby um just off off of the outside of the picture i have some horse pictures that i'm working from because once you start sculpting you're going to lose a lot of your drawings so you'll need your reference photos to refer back to It's a little cold in the studio today, so this clay isn't smoothing as well as I would like, but it's fine for what we're doing, so. You know, it's better that you don't see perfect situations every time because, you know, we learn more from difficult tasks and mistakes than when everything goes right because everything never goes right all the time so you can see how we're starting to get this eye structure here area put together isn't it amazing how you can just take a little lump of clay and you can really start to see it coming together already it's so cool let's just clay amazes me and I love this clay it's partially made from beeswax so it has this sort of a sweet scent to it see and then we've got some really cool foreshortening going on here with that jaw so we want to get that angle Oh, look how fun this is. Wee! A little piece of clay. And we'll get that jawbone coming in here. And underneath the eye. Look at that. Oh, this horse has such pretty eyes, too. And get that tucked down. See this bone right here comes right back along the jawbone, so that gives you your base for your eye. I love sculpting eyes. They're just the heart and soul of a piece. I'll bring you around this way so you can see this from my angle. Oh, it probably looks like spaghetti to you. <laughs> I don't want to get too much detail again just you know the basic structures in but I'm kind of having fun with this so I'm just gonna keep going okay we have the center of the face coming down here that would be right about here. So let's push this down just a little farther. There we go. Get this pushed down. We can take a little more off this ear. So I'm just going to trim that off again. And just take our exact on life and shave down another layer 
It looks pretty thin, but I want to have enough uh, room to build some detail. So you can kind of see how thin that is. But I want to, you know, carve it, make it rounded, give a little fur. And if it's already too thick, then I don't have the room to do that. So we just took it down a little farther. And then... Let's try this tool. See, and I want the crest to come down the center of the head here, so there we go. So the way the head turns, you know, you get that three-quarter angle and it gives you a lot of depth. Okay, we're about 20 minutes into this video, so I'm going to just keep working here. Getting these shapes blocked in, and I'll um, check back with a little more detail probably tomorrow. Thanks for watching.